This is from Kamchatka by Marcelo Figueroa, an Argentinian novelist. It was published in the UK by Atlantic Books and in the US by Grove. The last word. The last thing Papa said to me, the last word from his lips, was Kamchatka. He kissed me, his stubble scratching my cheek, then climbed into the Citroen. The car moved off along the undulating ribbon of road, a green bubble bobbing into view with every hill, getting smaller and smaller until I couldn't see it anymore. I stood there for a long while, my game of risk tucked under my arm until my abuelo, my grandpa, put his hand on my shoulder and said, let's go home. And that's all there is. If you want, I can give you more details. Grandpa used to say God is in the details. He used to say a lot of things, like what Piazzolla plays is in tango, and it's just as important to wash your hands before you pee as afterwards. You never know what you've been touching. I don't think those things are relevant. We said our goodbyes in the forecourt of a petrol station on Route 3, a few kilometres outside Dorego, in the south of Buenos Aires. The three of us had breakfast in the station, café, croissant and café con leche, in bowls as big as saucepans, with the petrol company logo on them. Mama was there too, but... She spent the whole time in the toilet. She'd eaten something that had upset her stomach and she couldn't even hold down liquids. And the midget, my kid brother, was asleep, sprawled in the back seat of the Citroen. He wriggled his arms, his legs, all the while while he was asleep, as though staking his claim, a king of infinite space. At this moment, I am ten years old. I look normal enough, apart from the unruly tuft of hair that sticks up like an exclamation mark. It's spring in the southern hemisphere. October days shimmer with golden light, and today is no exception. The morning is a palace. The air is filled with fluttering panaderos, dandelion seeds, those daytime stars that in Argentina we call panaderos, little bakers. I catch them in my cupped palms and with a puff of breath set them free again, urging them on to fertile ground. <laughs> the midget would crack up if he heard me saying the air is filled with fluttering panaderos. He'd roll around on the ground, clutching his belly, laughing like a lunatic, as he imagined tiny men, their brown and white aprons covered in flour, floating around like bubbles. I can even remember the other people who were at the petrol station. The petrol pump attendant, a chubby man with a moustache and dark armpits. The driver of the IKA truck, counting a wad of fat banknotes, as big as bedsheets on his way to the toilet. So, I guess Grandpa's maxim about washing your hands before your pee is relevant, after all. The backpacker with the messianic beard crossing the forecourt as he heads for the open road, his billy cans clanking like tolling bells calling to repentance. The little girl sets down her sipping rope and wet her hair under the tap. She wrings it dry as she walks back, water dripping onto the dusty forecourt. The drops that just a moment earlier spelled out Morse code in the dust vanish as the seconds pass. Obedient to the call of gravity, they trickle down into the mineral particles snaking through the spaces that exist where there seem to be none, leaving behind some part of their moisture to give life to those particles, even as they lose themselves on their journey towards the molten heart of the planet, the fire where the earth still looks as it did when it was first formed. In the end, we always are what we once were. Gracefully, the girl in front of me bends down, and for a minute I think she's bowing, but in fact she's picking up her skipping rope. She starts to skip again, a perfect rhythm, the rope whipping through the air, whoop, whoop, creating a bubble in which she hovers. Papa opens the door to the gas station and lets me go in. Grandpa's already inside waiting for us, his teaspoon creating a whirlpool in his café con leche. Sometimes there are variations in what I remember. Sometimes Mama doesn't get out of the Citroen until we leave the café because she's busy scribbling something on the pack of jockey club cigarettes. Sometimes the numbers on the petrol pump run backwards instead of forwards. Sometimes the backpacker gets there before us, and by the time we arrive, he's already hitchhiking, as though in a hurry to discover a world he's never seen, the clank of his billy cans peeling out the good news. The variations don't worry me. I'm used to them. They mean I'm remembering something I hadn't noticed before. They mean that I'm not exactly the same person I was when last I remembered. Time's weird. That much is obvious. Sometimes I think everything happens at once, which is anything but obvious and even weirder. I feel sorry for people who brag about living in the moment. They're like people who come into the cinema after the film has started, or people who think drink, drink Diet Coke. They're missing out on the best parts. I think time is like the dial on a radio. 
Most people like to settle on a station with a clear signal and no interference, but that doesn't mean you can't listen to two or even three stations at the same time. It doesn't mean synchrony is impossible. Until quite recently, people believed it was impossible for a universe to fit inside two atoms, but it fits. Why dismiss the idea that on Times Radio, you can listen to the entire history of humanity simultaneously? Every day, life gives us an intimation of this. We sense that inside us, every we we once were, and will be, coexists. The innocent, self-absorbed child, the sensual young man, generous to a fault, the adult feet firmly planted on the ground, yet still clinging to his illusions, and finally we are the old man who knows that gold is just another metal. As his eyesight fails, he has acquired vision. Sometimes, as I remember, my voice is that of the ten-year-old boy I was then. Sometimes the voice of the seventy-year-old man I am yet to be. Sometimes it is my voice, at the age I am now, or the age I think I am. Who I have been, who I am, who I will be, are all in continual conversation, each influencing the other. That my past and my present together determine my future sounds like a fundamental truth. But I suspect that my future joins forces with the present to do the same with my past. Every time I remember, the person I was speaks his lines, performs his actions with increasing confidence, as though with each performance he grows more comfortable with the role, understands it better. The numbers on the petrol pump will start to go backwards. I can't stop them. Grandpa is back by his truck, one foot on the running board, softly singing his favorite tango. Le si por Dios que mas dao, que estoy tan cambiao, no se mas quien soy. Papa leans down and whispers the last word into my ear. I can feel the warmth of his cheek as I could feel it then. He kisses me, his stubble rasping against my cheek. Kamchatka. Kamchatka is not my name, but as he says it, I know he is thinking of me.